So if you're listening to our podcast right now, you probably know about my family's loss. And uh, I just want to say that the amount of outpouring online and emailing and people I still haven't been able to call back is uh, incredible. Um, I thought about this over the holidays and I decided to come back to the podcast um, because I think you know, it's a long day where you're not working, you get in your head, and I think it's going to be a great break, and I think it's really cool to laugh. And um, so with that, here I am with my old friend, David Spade, on with the show. <laughs> you know, Dana, I have to say, to add to that, that um, there was uh, so much so much goodwill out there uh, that was going through me to tell you, uh, even... Uh, Mrs. Uh, Farley, Chris's mom, wrote a letter for me to give to you. I couldn't give it to you yet because I hadn't seen you, but I just thought I'll wait on that. But mm -hmm. just to show you, it's really everywhere, and I just didn't want to overload you. But as you know, everyone uh, just was all very, very nice things. No one knows how to how to deal with it, but I I, I agree that it's, it's nice to do the show again. I know it's very it's very sweet, and if people what if I could ever if I could do anything, and, and you really can't. It's like mm -hmm. me and my wife and our son's private journey, and we're all together, and we do a, a lot of fun things. We really you know we hike, go to church. You just want to make sure that you keep moving, and like I said, doing this and riffing with you, I think is going to be very healthy for me, yeah. and, and as I recover, because I'm kind of on the pain train. And and with about uh, millions of other people on this planet, and you you don't know how long you're going to be on it, or when it'll stop, or when it will get better. But in the meantime, all this kind of stuff uh, is is very healthy. So, I I, I agree. <laughs> I mean, I've gone through things. Now I can't say um, the same things, but when I have things in my life, sometimes I go back too quickly, like a day later, a week later. And but I do like to get my mind off things, and it doesn't mean I've forgotten anything. It just means I just need a break. And uh, we laugh a lot together when we're together. And um, I like leaving you messages mm -hmm. and trying to make you laugh because, you know, just things in life happen. But we can move on, and we're just gonna this this mm -hmm. episode of Fly on the Wall is just me and you, and which I kind of like. Mm -hmm. I'm so sick of those fucking guests. But other than that, no, they're good. But uh, <laughs> you're so needy, and you got to do research. No. And where, where and did you go it, to high school? I know. And toward the end of it, I'm like, oh wait, do they have to talk? We have to go to them sometimes. So I just I wanted know. to catch up with you on a few things because I haven't seen you in a bit, and uh, it was a lot happened. There was award season, and uh, I don't know if you did see. Well, basically, honestly, they should really just connect all these awards and make them one day. It's just a two-hour show and then just go right into the next <laughs> one. You know what I mean? P you know, powder the makeup, switch the dress, and because it's too many. And they're all the same, exactly the same. I get that it's, its purpose is to promote the industry. But it, mm -hmm. it does at a point when you're watching it. I was watching The Critics' Choice, and there's a point where there's so much praise heaped on the person who is actually just playing in front of a camera and stuff. It's like they're playing a, a pretend world. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, I mean, I like it's when great, you said, I like when you go, I know the purpose is to make, is to promote the industry. I'm like, I didn't even know there was a purpose. I'm glad you figured out there was a purpose to. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like they're, they make believe in front of a lens. It's not like they've landed on Mars and, and they know it, but it, this, you know, you, you heal a broken world when you play the, you know, the uh, Dracula Barbie. character or whatever. But, <laughs> but, well, Barbie was a great movie. I have nothing against it. But yeah, it's uh, award shows are really funny that way. It just is. Um, you, you know, I was, uh, this is the week of like Emmys, Oscars are coming up. I was uh, shockingly up for two Golden Globes and, uh, and two Emmys. The Golden Globes were the first funniest because when you're up for TV, they see you in the back. Don't get near the precious movie stars. Mm -hmm. You can't tell on TV, but I was back in La Mirada. Like if I won somehow, I would have had to take a shuttle to the stage because there, I couldn't have gotten up there before a commercial. It would have been like, excuse me, pardon me, like Bugs Bunny, excuse me, excuse me. So luckily <laughs> I didn't win. And then when I did the Emmys, this is the grossest story because I'm sitting there. I'm pretty close to the front because I was up for a supporting actor or whatever. Nice. And then the, they literally go, and the winner is, and they show us all, and they go, David Hyde Pierce. 
And I swear to God on David, I made a move. I made, I lifted oh, 10% no. of my body weight and that's all it took for people to go, he thought he fucking won for a second. I go, no, I didn't. I was shifting. I was giving him a standing ovation. <laughs> so embarrassing. So, so in your sick. head, when you heard David, you lifted up and you heard Hyde Pierce in your head, did you think, David, and then I lose. Yep. And you sat back down. I really, it got That's to it David, and I didn't think there was another David. It's, and I just started to lift, like the the puffiness of my feathered hair was just starting to lift up a quarter inch, and they go, Hyde Pierce, and I just quickly deflated, and people were like, let's roll that again. That motherfucker flinched. He moved a little oh, bit. Oh, they he, did? He thought he won, and everyone it was like, I a saw meme you. back. No, uh, thank God, Lord, there wasn't geez. memes. Oh, I would have been the biggest clown. But, you know, I was up for it. That, that's the important part. You do. I, I'd done 10 years of stand-up. I was on SNL, but I desperately didn't want to win at that moment. Lauren was sitting behind me. I was nominated. And I just broke out in a cold sweat. I don't even know what it was. I just did not want to have to go up there. And get that award, but I did win one. It's a grotesque later. feeling. Oh, you won? Whoops! Sorry, how'd that get out? <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> something slipped out. No, I did finally win one six years later. And Bob Hope, the Bob Hope for you people under seventy, um, he handed me my award. That was kind of weird. <laughs> you see someone as a kid on TV, dude. That's funny because I'm not that old, but Amelia Earhart gave me mine. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, Henry VIII uh, nominated me. Was, <laughs> You're like, that was the one where I think um, Queen Elizabeth I was hosting? Yeah, I think Jesus introduced the person who gave me mm -hmm. the award. And then but wait a minute, there was no... Pilot was sitting next to me. Attila yeah, the Hun was up for best uh, plunder on the uh, Dude, circuit tell me, so there. what did you win for? Was it for SNL character? It was a... Yeah, just being, or I, I kept, I got nominated, but I finally won. Because what in those days, uh, I think you were put in, I was up against Cirque du Soleil and stuff. It was like a He's variety good. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> I was up against jugglers <laughs> and circus people and I don't know, You're lion like, tamers. That's what I am to, to the world? And, and then I'm the sketch guy. So then yeah. someone said, you know, they don't even really look at the tapes, you know. He, he tell, told me the behind the scenes of how to win an yeah. Emmy. So somehow I changed my little byline or something. That's how I probably got it. But Oh, because, you know, it, it is true what you're up against. Because I was up for, the Golden Globes were tougher because it was Best Supporting Actor on TV or movies. So for, I feel like I already won because it wasn't a comedy. It was comedy, drama, and movies that are on TV. So mm -hmm. I was up against, I think, Don Cheadle from ER. And then uh, talk about <laughs> old. You know who won? Gregory Peck. No joke. He did Great 90 respect. seconds is a cameo in a movie called Moby Dick. And he went up there and I was so shocked because wow. I thought he died 10 years before that. So he walks up there and then he goes, I can't believe I'm getting an award for a 90 second cameo. And I'm in the back going, me either. <laughs> <laughs> Give it really to me. His name is Greg Pecking Order was his real name, but he shortened it to Peck. But- I'm Gregory Peck and used to talk very deep. I actually was at an award show. Now that we're on award show stuff, Kirk Douglas mm -hmm. was getting the AFI Lifetime Achievement Award because I had done a movie with him and Burt Lancaster the year before. And Danny mm -hmm. DeVito, I'd only been on SNL 10 shows. He introduced me to the stage. Here's a guy um, Saturday Night Live. Is something. So no one knew me. Very nerve wracking. So I did that, but... Ugh. Gregory Peck was sitting next to me and my wife and her mom's ultimate movie star is Gregory Peck. So before the show started, we went over and said hello to him and he couldn't have been nicer. But then mm. behind us was this, we heard this person go, <clears throat> and it was Lauren Bacall and she was pissed. Ooh. I could see what Bogart put up with. Really? Man. I felt bad for Humphrey Bogart that moment. <laughs> he would put up with <laughs> No, we were uh, in the wrong. The AFI award, that is a... Uh... That's the Teamsters Union, I think, award. Yes. Um, these people, Gregory Peck, the AFI, which is the uh, Auto Workers Union Award, I think. Um, mm -hmm. They uh, 
they are nervous, and I was nervous there being up for many, many, many awards. So, which brings me to Joe Coy, because so many people said, hey, you're a stand-up and you've hosted stuff. How did he do? And it's such a big subject because I think one of the problems, one of them, I, I don't think he bombed. Really, I think that was a rumor that got started, and then everyone kind of ran with it. People go, "I heard he was horrible," and I go, "Did you see it?" They go, "No, but that's what I heard." And I go, "Well, it's yeah. not that fair because you're nervous getting an award, so you're playing for a crowd of people that just want to get the monologue over with, so they can figure out did I win or not, so I can relax. Mm -hmm. That's one po problem, uh, and I think he's not as well known as as a lot of hosts. Steve Martin, everyone reveres. Ricky Gervais, everyone fears. I mean, he's up there. Like him or not, he's very ballsy. He's had huge hit shows. He's very respected. Mm -hmm. And he's one of them. And I think Joe Coy, who's a successful comedian, isn't really in the movie and TV world, if, if you agree. Where So when he comes up, it's like, how dare you talk to Robert De Niro? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's a little of that, I think. Well, uh, to put Joe Coy in context, yes, he... He's a gigantic stand-up with a huge following. But mm -hmm. in the way the world works now, it doesn't always matriculate to across-the-board fame mm. from sea to shining sea. So a lot of people may not have been familiar. You know, Joe Coy plays arenas. He sells out the forum. He's um, He riffs. He does characters. Mm -hmm. He tells stories. He's like a powerhouse and incredibly likable. And he just ran into an audience that was a regular kind of corporate date that a lot of times they don't, you're, you're not the star of the show. You know, when you do stand up, he headlines is he's the star of the show. Now it's a guy who'll fill some time yeah. before the awards, you know? So it's, it's, it's difficult for everyone. Ricky Gervais saying, this is it. I'll never do it again. Never, never. You're nothing. You know, nothing. You've never been anywhere. You don't, you don't mean anything. And he's telling the audience that. So he took all the power back, but only he could do that. Cause that's just who he is. But it was so funny. That is a rare thing where you're allowed to do that. But like Steve Martin and Martin Short, I think people like to watch. They're already halfway, 90% laughing when Steve Martin comes up. And when it's Joe Coy, they're at zero. They're going, okay, you've got a lot to do here. Right. To get me going. Yeah. I think. Yes. Uh, and, and going, Taylor Swift was almost pre-offended when she sat down and was just waiting. <laughs> because I agree. Like, she's there. She's a big star. Um I mean, he could have said, you know, the Golden Globes, uh, when they found out Taylor Swift was here, they were going to switch it over to Peacock uh, because that's what the <laughs> NFL did. That's a good one. Uh, but Taylor Swift, I think he did do a soft joke towards her, which wasn't really offensive, but I think she she could have, she gave him the Joaquin Phoenix gladiator thumbs down. And once that happened. Uh, the tide. So the idea was he was trying to make fun that when she's at an NFL game, they the NFL cuts mm -hmm. away to her, but we're not going to do Too it many so times, much yeah. here. It was kind of the God. The was that the exact joke? It was something like, so we're going to have more cutaways in the end. It was something that was kind of innocuous. It wasn't really a burn or anything. She could have made a face like, "Look at me, I'm so cute." They keep showing me, and everyone would have laughed. You know, I think when they yeah. showed uh, Meryl Streep or someone like Martin Short, they they went with the joke and just goofed around and, la and then people laugh mm -hmm. because they go, oh, are they okay with it? Oh, okay. But when she kind of iced it, it was, it was a bit of a heavy lifting after that. Uh, and that's tough, you know? Yeah. Well, know. it's, I've I, been there. I've done a lot of corporate dates and uh, you get yeah. used to them and you don't have any expectations and you make sure that. You just try to charm them and then you could have a little fun, you know? Um, yeah. They, they always come up to you and go, Hey, the CEO's here. Say something about him. He's got three balls and beats his wife. Try to work that in. And I go, Oh, okay, sure. <laughs> um, he also said he had 10 days to prepare. He only had 10 days. I would have said, and I spent the first nine watching killers of the flower moon. And, and, and that's kind of funny because the movie's so long, but you're just making fun of the length. And it has no real edge on it to really hurt someone's feelings. Everyone feels like, mm -hmm. oh, I could laugh at that. We all know it's long. But when you, I, there was, oh yeah, the color purple yeah. joke about um, Ozempic. hemorrhoids and Ozempic. Yeah. I just thought, I don't know if I'd mix 
a race movie with a joke. It's just a it's just a dicier outcome. Yes. It makes people I've, tighten up. Yeah. And I think Joe did say that they actually kind of were writing almost the day of, actually, because sure. it's sort of getting the team together. Um and uh you know what? He's selling out the forum this weekend or something. I mean, he's yeah, going to be fine. This is nothing. Uh, and he's actually more famous. And I think he handled it very well at the end of the day. You know, you feel some mm. empathy for him because he's a brilliant stand up. It's ridiculous. I want to host it next year and see if I can bomb intentionally. Worse. Mm -hmm. We're available. One more thing against him. <laughs> or going against him, not him personally, because I do like him. He's been on this podcast. He was great. Uh, if you want to get a feel for him, you can listen to that one. But he, it's the first time I've read ahead of time that people turned it down. Like Chris Rock, Ali Wong, Ali Wong. So that's another thing you got going into. Everyone's like, oh no, who's going to do it? Who'd they wind up with? And then he comes out and they go, oh, they wound up with this guy. So he's got to win them over a little extra on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's a good observation. I'm, now I'm remembering that. They listed all the people that turned it down. And these are like long-term iconic names like Chris Rock or Tina Fey. And that yeah. uh, and Joe Coy's doing it. Huge following, so they go, not oh, a household so they got name. Him. If you don't yeah. know him, yeah, they go, oh, that's If you oh, haven't so seen his specials must... on Netflix, yeah. Right. And then some people do know him and some people just go with the crowd and go, oh, are we deciding to ice him like it's high school, you know, like it's Mean Girls? <laughs> You know, yeah. by the way, if one joke didn't work, I'd go, oh, so it's Asian hate. That's what I would say at my first joke, just to make people go, oh, no, 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 I like you. And then they have to stand up and applaud. Oh, yeah, that would be a nice table turner. Yeah, Taylor a lot Swift. of Asian hate out here tonight. <laughs> by the way, with Taylor Swift and Kelsey, what's his name? Uh, Travis, Travis Kelsey. Is there like a, like a Benefer? Do we, is anyone put together a... Because oh. we know Swifties, but do we have one for them? Oh, you got any? I couldn't come no, up with anything that... One. Yeah. Swift, Swifty Travis? Oh, I <laughs> think it's trailer. Works. No. Wait, there was something I heard once. Oh, it wasn't of, that catchy. Yeah, she's Taylor. Taylor. Do you know that they're saying Chilean uh, Murphy's name wrong? They say Killian, but the real name is Chilean Seabass. Anyway, why, why are you I know hosting with those doozies? <laughs> well, look, this whole podcast here is really a soft audition for David to host next year's Golden Globes. And with these powerhouse one-liners that are coming out, yeah. there, let me put it to you this way. There's lots more where that came from. If everyone, everyone home's listening going, is this guy on joke steroids? These jokes are too good. They can't be real. <laughs> He's hitting HRs, dingers out. The yeah, he's, it's like he's just wall. coming off of the top with it. Really, <laughs> I'd love uh, to see that. Mm -hmm. No, uh, I, and uh, then that's could, all gonna. But 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 you know Chelsea Handler, who we haven't had on, but we all know Chelsea. Mm -hmm. uh, she did the Critics she hosted, Choice Awards. Yeah, and you saw that, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, people said, oh, she got one in on Joe Coy, her ex-boyfriend. So that makes it even extra juicy. But I wonder it's if he kinda, texted her. kind of soft, though, you know. Yeah. What? And, you know, every room's different. You'd have to be in the room at the Golden Globe as a stand-up, like sit there, see yeah. how they're talking, get the vibe, and then get the vibe of where the Critics' Choice Award, what the feeling of it was. But I would say that she really, she charmed them. You know, there was a lot of compliments and ch and charm and then some and then jokes. But maybe that's, a, you know, it was just she was going to do it anyway. But she really, you know. Right. I think she knew. You, at least she got to look at that one and say, what can I learn from that? And if she's going to do a joke, because Joe Coy did. People got mad. He said, oh, those are the writer's jokes. They don't work. The ones I write are good. Something like that. Now. The next host that ever did anything might want to do a joke like that, say, that was from my writers, just to get them an applause, you know, like that kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, there's 48 award said, shows between January yeah. and February, and that's literal. And there is a possibility 
that Killian Murphy might win the Oscar and then forget that he was in the movie. It had been so long and so many award shows. He goes, what am I up here for? They're, you know they here travel for. the world. And what's well, I should introduce it. David and I are now going to do a special third podcast where we just critique award shows. I know. What are we doing? We're going too far. We should talk more about <laughs> what else can I tell you about? About my road gigs this weekend on my tour. I was in well, the blizzard, look, Dana. There was an icy storm in the Midwest, and you were apparently caught in the middle of it. Can you speak to that? How, wh- <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for these hard-hitting questions. Well, you had called me, I well, think, or we talked, and you said you didn't know crying. if the gig was happening. Yeah. You were pretty upset. Yeah, they were saying, you know, I'm going to Chicago. They say it's the worst blizzard, blizz watch. Uh, and it's it's so crazy. Of course, people go, you're going to go to Chicago and Michigan in January. I'm like, oh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, what are you going to catch? A blizzard? Of course, <laughs> blizzard shut down the airport. I got in, landed, and then everything shut down. School mm. shut down. They're like, and people like on DMs going, please don't do the show. I, I live four blocks away. I'll never make it. I'm like, four blocks? I just flew six hours. Like, I'm going. If I can go, I'm going. I can't bail out on the people that show up. If one person shows up, I'd feel horrible that I didn't go on. So- I tried and all day I just watched the local weather. They was so weathery. The weather guy would go, talk for 20 minutes. He goes, let's throw to And they threw to another weather guy. I'm like, I've never seen him throw to more weather. And it was well, like a chick because she was like tired going, okay, I got it from here. All right. Yeah, it's horrible. And so it's, you know, it's weather porn at a certain point because they just <laughs> okay. want to get you so terrified. The guy is yeah. taking blizz pics. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I took a little blizz pics and, uh, and the it. girl was showing her boobs. It, it is like porn. I mean, it's very similar. So well, I it, was scared. Everyone was scared. How are you going to turn off a weather guy if he's saying it's dangerous out there? We're going to tell you right after this word from our sponsors. You could get killed yeah. if you walk outside. Hi, I'm Johnny Weather Guy. Yeah, they show. And, and I'm in a building that's going, ur, ur, ur. it's swaying. And I'm like, hey, uh, Chicago, quit that. pretending like you don't know about snow and wind and cold. Like, that's your whole pitch. You know, that's your license plate. <laughs> oh, isn't it called the Windy City? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, I know. And they're like, there's wind. I'm like, guys, guys, quit. I'm not in Arizona saying it's hot. I can't believe it. Like, this is how it is here. And everyone's scared. And then Bobby Miyamoto, who is my, my opener, we go to North Face and it's closed for inclement weather. And he's like, guys, this is your Super Bowl. Why are you closed? What North Face is closed. This is the one place that should be open. You need a that, coat. Well, he needs a coat and he can't get in the store. So what is he supposed to do? <laughs> Shouldn't it that have to coats? be open? This is all they want is cold weather. And they're like, guys, it's freezing. We're like, no shit. See, if Trump was anyway. president, he'd be like, we're going to keep North Face open. We're going to keep it open. We're going to open. We're going to keep it open. Well, I told them and they're going to open it up. Um, <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's saying Everybody they should said it. Let me tell you what they don't know. So you're, did you do the first night then? You did the gig. I, so Chicago turns into like, hey, it, it was a pretty big theater. They're like, hey, if there's not a power outage, we're going to go. And I'm like, I, if I can get there, I'll go. So I went there. I'm like, I got to get to Chili's first, you know, whatever. So I get there and it was probably 80% full. It was sold out, but, you know, probably 20% just didn't come. And then, so uh, 80% full. So it was 18,000 yeah. people about. Yeah. So it was like a little more than the Super Bowl. And then <laughs> the next night was Michigan, where I was born in Michigan. And we were up in uh, Royal Oak, I think it was called. And that was full. And by the time we got up there, it wasn't quite as bad. So it was, it was pretty still sold out. It wasn't, they were really, they were a little tougher mm-hmm. about it. I thought it was odd that, and this is pointless to say, but the Kansas City football game was on and the Buffalo game was canceled when they were both like horrible weather, like below zero. Why cancel one? And not the other. Interesting. I don't think Taylor, Taylor Swift, Swift made a call. Made a call. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, President <She> said, Biden. <laughs> Hello, President of the world. Biden. I'm doing it. Taylor Swift is on line three. <laughs> She's like, if I flew here, the game's going. Thumbs up. And they're like, she says thumbs up. It's on. 
<laughs> well, my it's wife did true. watch the game uh, because she wanted to see the Taylor Swift reaction shots uh, in the, yeah. up in the frozen frozen booth. Um, there, there's always one guy. It's it's forty below windchill, no exaggeration, with no shirt on, and they never follow hmm. what happens to this guy. <laughs> Has he ever heard of frostbite? Would he? Would he- dies immediately after it is a, yeah. it's a life to get on youtube and to get on some cutaway on camera and they mm-hmm. all you know they paint their face take the shirt off and it's a lot of burt kreischer out there and um <laughs> and they all look like burt kreischer exactly <laughs> there's a whole uh, stadium full of burts that'd be a great audience yeah and so they do it and they hope and if you don't get on camera then you're really fucked because then mm-hmm. you're like why did I get hypothermia for nothing? My nuts are in my fucking throat, babe. Christ sakes. I did a movie in Canada once and it was like 40 below and they, at the <laughs> night shoots, that. they'd yell out, someone's got <laughs> frostbite. That. Yeah. <laughs> Nicholas Cage and I and John Lovitz and you'd wear three, four layers of clothes, like clothes, mm-hmm. more clothes, more clothes. And then in between shots, they'd put a thing around your face, just your eyeballs and you had goggles on and they're, they were doing fake snow. And anyway, it was a paycheck. It's so hard. Night shoots are horrible. And that is, and cold is very tough. Uh, I went to get a, I didn't go to Barney's and I went to Barney's years ago to buy a big winter jacket. And they go, I go, I need one for the snow and I need one for winter. And they go, oh, this is a great one. It was a puffer with leather on the outside and it was very expensive. And they go, but a lot of the wrappers wear it. And I said, oh, done. That's all I need to hear. It's already confirmed cool. And then I said, I'll take it skiing. And he goes, ooh, I wouldn't wear it in the snow. I go, you wouldn't wear your winter coat in the snow? And he goes, mm-mm. I go, what about the rain? He goes, no. He, I go, what would you wear? He goes, I wouldn't wear it in rain, drizzle, um, dusty, cloudy, thunder, <laughs> sunset. Uh, it's it's kind of nice fog, hung up in your room. It's, it's more of a show Yeah, he goes, it's more yeah. of an indoor coat for it's Instagram. I would take a photo for yeah. wearing. You can yeah. wear it, but it's not advisable. Uh, I go, well, like, I just wear it in my kitchen. He goes, mm, more uh, of a living I wouldn't, room. I wouldn't. Meh. Too many windows. Uh, so I, I uh, it's hard to wear a coat on the plane. The coats are so big on this dog shit flight they had to they had to stop my flight they're like we're leaving in four minutes and everyone's like okay and then the one thing that's infuriating is we're sitting for 40 minutes and we haven't done anything and they give us no information and then and the flight attendants are cackling up front they're like where are you going tonight <laughs> oh last night blah, blah blah and i'm like you can't be happy until we take off you have to be sad like us stressed <laughs> worried like oh we're trying to get this plane off the ground they're just giggling tickling and then we finally get on the tickling. runway <laughs> and we've got to fucking find they go we got to de-ice the, they're doing it they, they de-ice the wings then we're going to ice them again I'm like why are we icing them then they go now we got to de-ice them uh, we fucked up because we mm-hmm. iced them uh, Dana you don't get it I took a private jet out of Windover Nevada and the pilots were oh. back there right out of high school it was after a gig Mark Pitta was my opener at a casino it was probably mm-hmm. a rickety bargain basement private jet. And so they had to wake up the de-icing guy. He was asleep because it was like one in the morning. <laughs> and he comes in, he's got one of those guys, he has a long beard and then he has a rubber band around it and more beard. And so he gets out on the machine and they haul us out there and they're de-icing. And then we get out in the tarmac in the middle of nowhere, it's just ice everywhere. Mm-hmm. And the young pilot gets out of the plane and he, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna look around at the ice. So he goes around, looks at the ice. Mark Pitt has had at least two bottles of red wine. Yeah. And then he comes back in and I said, when will we know? When will we know? He goes, 20 seconds. Shut if we were actually up. getting lift. 20 seconds. After, After 20 you seconds, you'll off? know. After the wheels are you- up, what? 20 seconds. If we fly for 20 seconds, then we know the integrity that we have. We've iced properly and we're going to fly. He said 20 seconds. And then what if it doesn't work? I properly? said, could I get off? And he said, <laughs> too late. And he floored it. <laughs> and I'm just Dude, counting. I flying one. It goes, <laughs> I heard this on a plane once. And it goes, beep, 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 beep. And it was beeping. And the guy hit a button. And I go, did you fix it? And he goes, I fixed the noise. And I go, but what, why is there, why, what about, 
what's causing the noise? And he goes, sometimes these things have a way of figuring themselves out in the air. Let's go for it. Well, hey, look, I, I don't fly private jets all, all the time. I'm not to have international <laughs> wealth, but you can see the pilots and you hear things and you don't like to hear this when you're flying. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. That's the traffic, computer. Traffic. Traffic. Pull up. Yeah, I hear that. I can hear a regular plane. You walk up, I go, what's going on up here, guys? Traffic. Traffic. I'm like, wait, 500 feet. I go, what do these mean? What's going on? Why aren't you worried? 400 feet. 300 feet. Pull up. Pull Lots up. Lots of pull planes up. heading Traf- your way. Ice. De-ice. Ice. Ice, baby. I was up there and I was yelling, what are you guys doing? What are you guys doing? And I heard the computer say, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Good night. <laughs> Three to times. me. Yeah. Three times. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this clown? I like when the pilot, I was sitting on the plane because it was all the way from Michigan. And then the pilot comes out and he, and he takes a dump, you know, and they have to put the Bev cart in front of there. They won't even let me stand up. I know I'm not allowed to charge the cockpit. I know that part. <laughs> I but, know. Or look at the cockpit or head that way. She's like laying on it. And then I go, I just get up to go in the overhead to grab something. She goes, You'll have to sit down. You can't be in the aisle. I go, am I the guy? Am I going to, am really, am I throwing it all away so I can somehow crash this plane and go to jail, whatever. And then about the worst part is we're all timing the pilot. Cause he comes out so long, like 40 oh, minutes. All, He's like, all mm. the pilots unload, like nobody's business. I don't know what they're doing over there. They're holding it during layovers. I don't know, but they, they definitely see God in there, man. It's, it takes forever. Dude, he took his time, read the paper. He comes out, he goes, what's going on out here? I go, well, we crashed on an Island cause there's no pilot. So do you want to help me gather coconuts? <laughs> There was no one in the fucking flying the plane. Five foot tall flight (laughs) attendant with her arms crossed, standing in front of the beverage cart. If she's going to tackle Abdul, who was ever diving at the beverage cart. (laughs) (laughs) Well, Jesus. All terrorists are named Abdul. Good, we're canceled. Pick a random name. Steve. Steve. He's uh, the new head of ISIS. Steve. Uh, the terrorist. Mm-hmm. I will tell you before I get rid of you, Dana, because I got so many things to do today. I know you do have uh, a good life. But I I was realizing I, when I got back from vacation, I don't get many Christmas cards anymore sent to me in the old days. No. No. Now I get I get lazy emails with a photo. And I don't even get many of those. The last one was Happy Holidays from your family at Toyota of North Hollywood. <laughs> at the, where you got a oil change three and a half years ago. I'm like, are you really my family? And then they have a picture of their 3,000 employees. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? Look, hey, there's Kenny from sales, I think, in the back. So, oh, and then it says, yes. it says after, it says at the bottom, please join us for our hot chocolate brunch reception. I'm like, that was the worst fucking party I've ever been to. Kenny Come wasn't to Valencia there. Valencia on Saturday, February 18th for a special barbecue. Okay. With all the Toyota dealers and employees. I'm like, oh, I hope the guy that told me where the bathroom was was there. That's the only guy I talked to in the whole thing. Hey, we should pick on someone who's not our sponsor. Come to all new Hyundai. All right. March 4th. All right. The Hyundai barbecue for no. all of our... Listen, I'm spinning this to where at least Toyota's inviting me places. Hey, man, Toyota, I did a gig for them once, where a corporate date, where Jack Palance and I were doing a sketch together, like 8,000 people, and he's dressed like mm-hmm. uh, the city slicker. He's dressed like a cowboy, mm-hmm. and he was so nervous that he went, he had a ballistic breakdown right before we went out. He literally went really? crazy. <laughs> yeah. God damn it, got to find it. Because they told him to move because they're bringing cars through. And then he oh, goes out and he geez, nails it cool. perfectly, super charming. But I just thought, this is going to go down. We are in trouble. He was off his city slickers heat? Yeah. Yeah, doing corporate. He had a lot of and, heat uh, after that. Oh, yeah. He wandered around and stuff. But oh, he's, God, he, he's he did a, one-handed he's... push-ups on the Oscars, right? Is that his mm-hmm. claim to fame? Yeah. Friend of Billy Crystal's. He went to the stars. Um, I don't know why I said that. What what were we we talking about? We were talking about Toyota and then talking about Mm -hmm. you went, you were dating Jack Palance. Oh, Christmas cards. Yeah. I don't know about you, but lately (laughs) I've just, uh, (laughs) I've allowed everything. Because, you know, they say allow location. 
Oh yeah. I just say yes. So I you used do? to mix it up, up or no. I just go, yeah. And then I go down and accept fucking, cookies. Cookies. Yeah. Give me those fucking cookies. I'm the cookie monster. You want to accept give it, them or care. manage them. I press manage them. It goes, that's like accepting them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it goes, hey, it doesn't matter if you want these cookies. Just press yes or no. And I press no and it kicks me off the website. I go, well, I guess I have to say yes or I can't do anything. They're like, you're starting to get it. Yeah, start your again. fucking Definitely. cookies. If yeah. you don't do, if you don't say yes to cookies, you don't allow them. You don't allow your location. Your service gets kind of sloppy. Your connection gets soft, and you know that's that's how they get you. Mm-hmm. They know you don't care because they go, "Are are you allowing us to use your camera roll and use it against you at some point?" And I said, "Yes." <laughs> Let me just see this menu I'm looking at, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I always end up. Are, just are we allowed to look in your bank and take money out of it? And I'm like, yes. Can we harvest your information and sell it globally <laughs> to make ourselves rich? Can we get inside your personal information and put it out in the open market so people can target market you? And by the way, iPhones do listen. As far I mean, there's no way you're talking and then it shows up on your computer or in your email what you were saying. Are we allowed to watch you masturbate through your camera and then film it and then put it on you porn? I'm like, yes, <laughs> just let me see this menu. Are we allowed to deliver a camera that we <laughs> can stick <laughs> on your crotch? <laughs> We're realizing the camera we gave you to spy on you isn't good enough. Can you clip a camera onto your laptop <laughs> next time it's you have sex and we can cam. watch it? It's a crotch cam. We'll deliver it to you. Are we allowed to deliver it to this address? And we'll send real <laughs> cookies. Um, <laughs> we're in the wrong if you we're, hit cookies we will give you real cookies to go with the cookies mm, that sounds pretty good well I'm gonna I think for more sweet tooth I have a thing called uh, cream pie allow cream pie excuse and me I've been getting a lot of allows let me put it that way I've been getting a lot of cream pies in my algo does that um, sound sexual? Anyway, well, maybe we like, should maybe we should go on that. <laughs> it is sexual. I hate. <laughs> oh, I hate is it? I didn't know. Oh I'm yeah. Saying, what, what's the most delicious, irresistible dessert? Ask Heather. All right, let's end on that accidental dirty, dirty thing. But mm-hmm. I, we want to tell everyone also, Dana. Yes. We are doing a spinoff. We're doing a, a another podcast called Superfly spinoff of Fly on the Wall. Hmm. And it will be starting, I think, February second. And uh, it's going to be on video. Yes, we're we're making the leap, and then we'll be on YouTube, and you'll be able to see what we look like, filters, and what we feel like. Um, and we'll have clips on Instagram and TikTok, and you can comment saying, "Oh my God, these guys got old," or whatever. <laughs> How do they look that good? We'll be <laughs> no, we'll be on camera <laughs> doing stuff. So they'll, I, I do. I'll tease this. I have a new bit I'm working on where Barack Obama calls Joe Biden and can't quite hear him clearly, so he gets Hunter Biden to interpret. So that'll be on Superfly, <laughs> and you can see it, which is even funnier. So you get to see us. That's uh, right. Working our bits. Yes. And it's funny. So that starts soon. So watch that also. And Fly on the Wall. Uh, now we're back for uh, this year, mm-hmm. 2024. So we have a lot of good people coming up. And I uh, hope you keep tuning in. We really appreciate it that you've made it a big hit show. We really, really appreciate it. So it's thank you so much. I never thought I'd hear the word season three. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know yeah, we had season seasons, three. So we have a season three. And uh, thank you so much, everybody. And we will see you on Superfly and Fly on the Wall. Bye, thank Dana. You. Goodbye, David. This has been a presentation of Odyssey. Please follow, subscribe, leave a like, a review, all the stuff. Smash that button, whatever it is, wherever you get your podcasts. Fly on the Wall is executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Jenna Weiss Berman of Odyssey, Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment, and Heather Santoro. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman. <laughs>